Hey everyone, welcome back to the video. So today I'll be explaining physics paper 6 alternative to practical code 0625 paper 62 May June 2016. Let's get started with the first question. Question 1 states a student is investigating the stretching of the spring. The apparatus is shown in figure 4.1. So this is the diagram of the spring attached with the clamp. Part A states on figure 1.1 measures the air stretched length L0 of the spring. Record length 0 in the first row of the table 1.1. So over here we will measure L0 length of the spring. So we will write over here as 55 millimeter. So we write L0 is 55 millimeter. Part B states the student hangs a load L of 1 Newton on the spring and measures the new length of the L of the spring. She repeats the measurements using the loads of 2 Newtons, 3 Newtons, 4 Newtons and 5 Newtons. The readings are, the readings are shown in the table 1.1. For each set of readings, calculate the extension E of the spring using the suitable equation E is equal to L minus L0. Record the values of E in the table. So first we have 55 millimeter. We will subtract 55 from 55 which will be 0 because there is no load which is 0 newtons. Then at 1 newton we have 59. So 59 minus 55 will be 4 millimeter difference. Then for 2 newtons it is 9 meters millimeters. For 3 newtons it is 14 then for 4 it is 19 and for 5 it is 23. So this is what we will do in part 1. Part 2 states explain briefly one precaution that you would take in order to obtain reliable readings. View the scale at right angle or use a straight edge or a set square. So this will increase the reliability of the readings. Part C states plot a graph of E millimeter on y axis against L newtons on x axis. So over here we will write E millimeter and on y axis and length newtons on the x axis. So then we will plot the lines and write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And over here we will write 10, 20, and 30. Now over here we will draw a straight constant line because all the lines are in a straight line. So we will connect these and this will be the graph line for part C. Part D states the student removes the load from the spring and hangs an unknown load X on the spring. She measures the length L of the spring. So this is the length which is 72 newtons. Calculate the extension of E of the spring. So 72 minus 55 which will be 17 millimeters. It is important and must to write the measurement units without this one mark will be deducted over here it's one mark so you will get 0 0.5 part 2 states use the graph to determine the weight w of the load x show clearly on the graph how you obtain the necessary information so now over here we have 17 millimeter now what you will do you will take read reading from over here over here it's 15 16 17 two blocks so over here if we make it to the line straight line over here it is around 3.7 over here 3.7 so the weight of the load x will be 3.7 newtons so this is what you will write in part 2 of question d question 2 states a student is using a but a balancing method to determine the weight of a piece of soft molding clay. The apparatus is shown in figure 2.1. So this is a diagram with the molding clay on right side and an object P on left side. P is a metal cube of weight P is equal to 1 Newton. Q is a piece of soft molding modeling clay. The student places the cube P so that it weights acts at a distance X from the pivot. He adjusts the position of Q to balance the roll and measures the distance Y from the center of Q. 
to the paper. He calculates the weight W of Q using the equation W is equal to Px divided by Y. So part A states on figure 2.1 mark clearly the distance x. So over here you will mark clearly the distance from the center to the object P in the middle. Not over here and not over here. In the middle. So this will be stated as x. Part B states such as a change to Q that would make it easy to find the value of Y accurately. Make Q into a cube or into a regular shape. So the accuracy will be increased and the object will not move from one side to another as it is uneven sides. Part C states it is difficult to achieve an exact balance of the meter rule in this type of experiment. This can make the result unreliable. Explain how you would reduce the effect of this problem to improve the reliability of the experiment. The answer is repeat the experiment and take an average. So because in one experiment you will get a higher value, in second you will get a lower value. So you can use both values and calculate an average which will increase the reliability of the experiment. Part E states the metal cube P is larger than the width of the meter rule. Explain briefly how would you determine the reading of the meter rule scale at the position of the center of mass of P. You can draw a diagram. You may di draw a diagram. It's your choice. You can draw a diagram or not. But the answer will be find the readings of the center of mass of the cube and mark side of the ruler in desired position. So this will increase the accuracy and you will take a better reading of the mass of P. Part 2 states before starting the experiment the student determines the position of the center of mass of the meter rule. Explain briefly how you would do this. Place the ruler on the pivot without P and Q and record the reading at, of, at the balance point. So you have to record the reading at the balance point first so you can check where the ruler is balanced on the pivot. So this is what we will do in part E. The student is investigating the magnification of images produced by a lens. The apparatus is shown in figure 3.1. So this is the diagram in figure 3.1. The statement states the student places a screen at a distance d is equal to 80 cm from the illuminated object. The screen and the illuminated object remain in the same position throughout the experiment. So the distance d from the illuminated object is this d over here. So this is the distance between the illuminated object and the screen. She places the lens close to the illuminated object. She moves the lens until she, she sees a sharply focused enlarged image of the object on the screen. She measures the distance A from the illuminated object to the center of the lens which is 20.3 cm. Then she measures the distance B from the center of the lens to the screen which is 59.7 cm. Calculate the magnification m1 of the image using the equation m1 is equal to b divided by a. So this will be 59.7 divided by 20.3 which is 2.940. So the magnification m1 of the image is 2.94 which will be this will be the final answer. Part B states is student then moves the lens towards the screen until a smaller sharply focused image of the object is seen on the screen. She measures the distance x from the illuminated object to the center of the lens which is x is equal to 60.2. She measures the distance y from the center of the lens to the screen which is 19.8 cm. Calculate the magnification m2 of the image using the equation m2 is equal to x y divided by x. So 19.8 divided by 60.2 which will be 0 0.3289. So we will round this off into 3 significance. So 0 0.328 which will be 0 
so this is what we will write in part b part c states the student suggests that m1 and m2 should be equal state whether the so results support this equation so justify your answer by reference to the result so m1 multiplied by m2 is equal to 2.94 multiplied by 0 0.329 which is 0 0.96726 so the statement is yes it must match the results why because the difference is within the limits of experimental accuracy so this is what we will write in statement and justification part d states take two precautions that you would take in this experiment to obtain a reliable result so over here i have written three examples three types of precautions so first is use a darkened room or brighter lamp second one is mark position of the center of the lens on the holder and third is clamp the meter ruler in the position on the bench so that it doesn't move from one place to another so the accuracy will be increased part e states suggest one reason why it is difficult in this type of experiment to decide on the best position of the lens to obtain a sharply focused image on the screen because the image appears well focused over a range of lens position so this is what you'll write in part e question 4 states a student is investigating how the resistance of a wire depends on the length of the wire the student aims to plot a graph the following apparatus is available to the student a meter voltmeter power supply variable resistor switch connecting leads resistance wires of different lengths and meter rule plan experiment to investigate how the resistance of the wire depends on the length of the wire you should draw a diagram of the circuit you should, could use to determine the resistance of each wire explain briefly how you would carry out the investigation suggest suitable lengths of wire state the key variables that you would control draw a table or tables with the column head headings to show how you would display your readings you are not required to enter any readings in the table so first we will draw a circuit diagram with the battery and over here we have the resistors and voltmeter and ammeter then we will draw a table with length in meters voltage in volts current in amperes and resistance in ohms so this is what we will draw as circuit diagram and a table now in the second part of question 4 we have to explain how to carry out the experiment so first is connect the apparatus as shown in the circuit diagram between points e and q connect resistance wire of different lengths one at a time each time note the reading shown by the voltmeter and ammeter in the table shown alongside record for at least five resistance wires range of lens must be between 2 cm and 5 cm also take the largest length of the resistance at least twice the smallest length so this is what we will do now the control variables is to ensure a fair experiment other factors that affect the resistance of wire must be kept constant mainly the material of the wire the diameter of the wire and the temperature of the wire must be kept constant so this is what we will do in question 4 question 5 states a student is investigating the cooling of water some of the apparatus is shown in figure 5.1 so this is the figure 5.1 part a states the student pours 200 centimeter cube of hot water into a 250 centimeter cube of insulated beaker labeled a he covers the top of the beaker with the lid the student takes a temperature reading every 30 seconds as the water cools the readings are shown in figure table 5.1 part 1 states complete the column headings in the table so over here the column headings time will be in seconds as costa is degrees celsius another costa is degrees celsius and last one is also degrees celsius the starting temperature part 2 states the starting temperature costa of the hot water in a beaker A is shown in figure 
record this temperature in the table at a time 0 degrees. So what we will do is take the reading from the diagram over here it is 3 points above 80 so it is 83 degrees. So over here we will write 83 in below beaker A insulation and lift column at 0, degree, 0 seconds. So 83 will be written over here. Part B states the student repeats the procedure using a 250 cm cube beaker labeled B. This beaker is insulated but has no lid. He repeats the procedure again using a 250 cm cube beaker labeled C. This beaker has a lid but no insulation. All the readings are shown in table 5.1. Take the statement. Part 1 states take the statement that best describes the results of the investigation. So the answer will be removing the lid speeds up the rate of cooling significantly more than removing the insulation. So this will be correct. Other are removing the insulation speeds up the rate of cooling significantly more than removing the lid, which is wrong because both increases the cooling of the cup significantly. Third is there is no significant difference between removing the lid and removing the insulation which is wrong because there is a significant difference. So only the first one is correct. Part 2 states justify your answer by reference to the readings. Because at time 30 seconds the temperature drop for beaker C is more than beaker A. This is seen for time from 0 to 1. 20 degree 120 seconds so this is what we'll write in part 2 question c states state two of the conditions that should be kept the same in this experiment in order for the comparison to be fair first i have written three exam three conditions so first condition is room temperature second is identical lids third is starting temperature of the water part d states Suggest a suitable material for the lid. Give a reason for your choice of material. Material will be a card. Why? Because a card is a good insulator. Card is a poor conductor of heat. So this is what you will write in part D of question 5. Question E states describe briefly how a measuring cylinder is read in order to obtain a reliable value for volume of water, you may draw a diagram. View the measuring cylinder at right angles to the cylinder. Take reading from the bottom of meniscus. Why? Because the edge of the water is turned upwards, so it is appropriate to take the reading from one level below. If it, for example, in the beaker it is 29, so that is because the level of meniscus is turned up was upwards so you have to take a below reading lower reading which is 28 so the answer will be view the measuring cylinder at right angles to the cylinder take readings for the bottom of the meniscus so guys if you like this video and are clear with all your questions don't forget to subscribe like this video and share it with your friends see you in the next video bye Thank you.